tonight, finally, I'm getting to test two super servers that have the Samsung 950 Pro. Now, these are the fastest consumer SSDs in the world right now. What's exciting is I've got a procedure benchmark that you can follow along with. So if you own the same machine, why not set your BIOS up just like this with your fan speed cranked to full to make sure thermal throttling will not get in our way and check out the speed of your Samsung 950 NVMe drive. Now, what have I done to prep? Well, I already talked about the BIOS. How about I show you Winver. Build 1511. So this is a fresh build of Windows 10. The new version, 1511, the build that came out a few days ago in early November. All right, now Samsung Magician is something that has a tendency to auto start. So I'm gonna say remove from auto, remove from start. Whoa, there you go. And we can kill Samsung Magician from auto starting at run and we can exit it. But before I do that, let me just show you. Yeah, that's what I've got running, a 950, just like I said I was. And the other machine, same deal. Um, both machines were just rebooted, and I just forgot to turn off auto start of Samsung. I've already abused this drive on the left a bit. Let me show you Magician on the right. And a little less abuse on the one on the right. This is my drive on the left, and it's actually a barred one on the right. So I'm going to abuse my drive more than the other person's drive. That's the end of showing you Samsung here. Let me close that out. Close this from the system tray so nothing else is going on. Nothing's hidden here. What else did I do to set up? Well, I talked about file copy operations. What's special about this versus copying files on an SSD to an SSD? Well, I'm going to be using 10 gig between these. That's the exciting thing. So thank you for sticking with me this long. This is the first time I've ever tried this. I did an iperf speed test of my 10 gig interface, but I haven't actually done a good old fashioned file copy operation over a network share. And that's what I'm attempting to do tonight in front of you for my first time ever. Okay, so the 10 gig -E driver is loaded. A, a Cat 6A cable is wired up between the two machines. Let's see if I got a picture of that for you. Why, yes I do. That's what it looks like in the back. So we're not doing any 10 gig switches, which are pricey and I do not need for a two node cluster when just two machines need to see each other. So that's cool. And I made a private network connection so I can actually ping these, I actually disable the firewall too, but see the word private there. You disable the firewall, then you're able to ping and just demonstrate that you have IP connectivity. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, that's the other guy. How do we know it's the other guy? Well, we can do an IP config and look at ourselves. So yeah, clearly I am pinging the other machine. Cool. I am gonna need to set up a network share, but I wanna establish a baseline of how long this takes first. When I say, how long does this take? Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I've got an ISO file here. Not just any ISO file, it's Windows 10 download site. You go there. Now, neither of these machines have ever been on the internet, by the way. I did all this with a USB key. I installed the uh, NVMe driver and Windows 10, fresh, build 1511. And that's pretty much it. So there's nothing else on this machine. And I disabled the firewall and it's now barking about, about that. So when I installed Windows 10, um, I put a USB key in, I used the download or the Windows 10 media creation utility to make an ISO. And I then renamed it 10586. That's what build one or that's what 1511 is also known as. And I'm gonna actually use that three gig file for a little speed testing here. Now we have a problem. It takes too little time to copy the file to accurately benchmark. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> you just saw a three gig file copied. So yeah, I'm pretty over the moon about how fast I finally have giant files uh, moving around in my home lab, like I've always wanted with the rate adapter, but never quite achieved. Uh, it's great that a $350 roughly 
512 gig Samsung Pro uh, can give me these kinds of speeds in a home lab. It's just awesome. Okay, so we've ramped up. We got uh, how much data? 24 gig. Let's double that. I want this file copy operation to take uh, something like a minute. So right now I'm copying eight items. It's taking 15 seconds. All right, so with 50 gig, I'm probably somewhere near a minute of disk activity to copy this whole folder. All right, so we have 16 items. Let's make it a nicer number, uh, about 15 items, whatever. 45 gig, okay, never mind. I shouldn't have hit shift when I held down delete. So I really nuked that file permanently. All right, so the total is what's important here and I wanna see about 50 gig total to kind of make easy math. I'm a little shy of that. Let me go a little over. Okay, so we have too far over. Okay, we have about 50 gig of data now, close enough. Time to copy it. I should show you the properties of that folder. Okay, now how am I gonna show you this? Well, we can do the online stopwatch. So if you search for that in Google, you get this rather simple stopwatch. All right, it's good enough for what I'm about to try to do. And that is just a simple stopwatch for a copy operation. All right, so I've got that on my clipboard, right? We highlight the folder, we right click, we say copy, right click, paste, and then reach for the start button on the stopwatch real quickly. Here we go. So we're getting a nice smooth data rate shown here in the screen. But what I did notice is when it gets past the first few seconds, it does drop to about an average of uh, 600, 700 megabytes per second. I did this with a SUSE file. Um, getting a bit of stair-stepping today. This is a surprising result. It's a different behavior um, and inconsistent speeds. Hmm. And now it's smoothing out. Okay. So when I did a two minute, 50 second run with a SUSE uh, ISO that was a little bigger than these files, it was smoother, quicker. This one just uh, took a little longer to smooth out. Not too sure what to say about that. It is not thermal throttling. I have other videos that show that as long as I put the fan speed on high, which I've done for both of these systems, that ain't an issue. Let me show you. Fan speed, fan speed, full mode, fan speed on full. So that's, we're good there. Temperature's not getting high enough to have any kind of throttling. That is too bad that I was too busy talking to see that we were somewhere around a minute. So like any good test, you, you kind of want to run it twice. So I'm going to hold down shift. Whoa. Hold down shift, hit the delete key, say yes. It is not on the recycle bin. It's truly nuked. And we're going to do that again. And I'm going to pay better attention this time to get that stopwatch a little better. Here we, here we go. This time I think I'll speed up the middle of the video because we already know the behavior and we're getting less of that uh, herky-jerky stuff going on too. Interesting. Getting ready with the stopwatch this time. Okay, a little slower than the first run. So, well, this time it does appear the, the fan might be coming into action, but on a previous video, I blasted a fan right at it. And I think for long file copy operations, this might be just the way this drive behaves. I don't think it's about the thermals because they did ATTO, ATTO disk bench. And if you had fan on normal and you ran it twice in a row, you'd start to see a slight degradation, like 20%. This one, we saw a higher degradation. So I think this is just uh, what you can get out of a file copy operation on this particular drive. Okay, now the network test, all right? We got to set up a network share. So remember here, we got that IP. Okay, let's just set up a quick network share here. So 
How about, to be consistent, we'll go to the root of the C drive, make another ISOs folder, and then we can go ahead and share it out. So we go to sharing, basic sharing, say this user can get to that share, and that's about it. So what happens if we go over here? Okay, you can see the ISOs folder. And it's ready. So basically I can uh, do the same test, right? Copy. There, left arrow. Here's the network share. My first gigabit transfer. Now it might be kind of more fun to show you couple things happening. One, we'll see some files filling up here. Kind of slide that over a little bit. And two, sorry about the low resolution. I'm in kind of benchmark mode, 600, 800, over IKBM is the way to do it. I didn't really want to put a remote desktop in there. It's less confusing. We got two machines and you can see them side by side. Ethernet now shown. Uh, we don't really need that anymore. Uh, some files are going to show up in this folder, but more important is just kind of Ethernet and the shape of the curve. And I'm ready to hit paste. And to reset the clock, here we go. And we're off. How long does it take to copy over 10 gig, gigabit, or 10 gigabit, versus from the local drive to its own drive? Is it going to be more like the rapid speeds I saw when copying from a C drive in the motherboard to a C drive that was in the PCI slot? Or is it going to be more like copying to itself? Well, we're already seeing this is the speed winner. We are staying above 600 gigabytes per second. So we have one drive that's doing reads and another doing writes. They're happier that way. I already knew this from internal copies from a C to a D. Now we're doing a C to D essentially over the wire. And I am really pleased that 10 gig is not slowing me down. This is incredible. And 45 seconds or so. Awesome. So we learned a few things. <laughs> uh, well, 680 or so megabytes per second versus 1.1. Well, that means 45 seconds versus a minute and 15. We also get a very smooth performance. The 10 gig is uh, behaving. And now I have something I can test when both of these Windows 10 instances are running as virtual machines under VMware ESXi 6.0 update 1A, which is really my intended destination and use case for these two uh, really amazing servers. So there you have it. Uh, the only difference between them, by the way, is one has 128 gig alone in the left, and my machine has a more modest 64 gig. Hopefully I'll be able to upgrade soon. So that's where we're at. This was just meant to be a simple file copy operation. I did say that we are supposed to do things twice, didn't I? So I should probably do that. Let's reset the run, delete all those files. All right, and over on this side, we can do it, actually, let's see. Yeah, I made that more more difficult than it needed to be, so I'll put that in again. So we'll just say copy, back arrow, back arrow, we're on the network in the ISOs folder, and here we go again. Let me reset this and paste. Do we get the same behavior twice in a row? So far the answer appears to be yes. Data rate of 9.8 gigabytes per second, seriously? Really? <laughs> I am actually exercising and uh, the max of what it can do. Hmm. So when you do gigabytes versus gigabits per second, I'm actually witnessing filling the 10 gig E interface with data. Whoa, mind blown in another 45 seconds. So consistent results, happy results. I'm really happy about this and I'm quite pleased that the Samsung 950 Pro is awesome in any 
home lab or work environment or whatnot. Now, if you're going to abuse it for year after year, well, maybe I should be careful when I say work environment. If it's in a raid array or doing some sort of caching roller, abuse day and night, 24-7, well, you are going to need to watch how much data you're writing on this drive. Because my drive in the left now has a little bit less life because I've just done abusing it for the purposes of video a little longer. Normal use, I don't copy that many files that often. <laughs> um, who does? And even in an enterprise, you're generally not going to be, you know, filling or writing and reading huge files all day long. But I do point out, you just want to be a little careful. Uh, this is the latest firmware on the 950. And you'll see by four. So PCI by four is important on the motherboard to get the full speeds. You are not going to be able to replicate what you saw in this video with an older motherboard. Well, let's watch the shape of things if I try doing two paste operations concurrently. And let's see if 45 seconds becomes a minute and 30 or some greater number. Remember, the 10 gig can only do so much. So here we go. Where is the bottleneck? Okay, I did not reset things. So I'm going to cancel out. Left arrow, left arrow, come on. Not really what I meant to do. So much for smooth while recording myself, right? What I need to do is reset the run, right? Delete the folder over there. Now reads, go to town, read day and night. Don't worry about that. It's the rights and the left. It's the one in the, the machine on the left that's getting more abuse here. Okay, we're gonna watch the shape of the curve. Again, I think I did this, but copy. Go to the network share, and I'm gonna right click and paste twice. That second one's gonna act a little funny. So let's make another folder so it doesn't complain. Here we go. And a little hard to start the stopwatch and do all this with the mouse, but Close enough. All right, it halved each of them. It's spreading the load nicely. It's reading from an SSD, which cap is just capable of uh, more than this. And again, we're seeing that we are hitting the max of what 10 gig can do. We're cranking right near the top of 10 gigabit ethernet. And we're staying right up there at 98% or so of what it can do. Wow, even 99 briefly showing there. So very consistent behavior. You can see the stair step was because a second copy job started. And Windows decided, let me spread out the workload to each equally, giving them each half of the pipe. Again, these are speeds unlike anything I've ever seen in Gigabit. We are well beyond that. And that's what's really cool about being able to record this video and share it with you. Also, we're coming up on one minute and five seconds. So it'll be interesting to see how much time it takes to get all this work done. Copying twice as much data, or about 100 gig this time. It's probably going to take about a minute and a half. Okay, that second one's speeding up a bit, as expected. Here we go. Minute and 23. All right, so that worked. And I'm pleased with the results. I believe I'm done recording this quick video about file copy operations. Not a synthetic benchmark at all. We're showing an astoundingly quick NAS here, essentially. A file server, that's an insane uh, super server workstation, if whatever you want to call it, with lots of RAM and a ridiculous amount of power for a Windows 10 workstation, especially when it comes to uh, efficiency here. We're at 30, 40 watts tops here, folks, when you're watching this video. I have other videos showing that. That's what's amazing. Using 10 gig and sipping watts and using a tiny M.2 from Samsung on the motherboard, this is just an awesome situation. 2015 is a good year for home labs, and I thank you for watching and for visiting Tinkertry tonight and in the future.